So what is a raycast? This is a question we get often in Project Spark, and a raycast is a simple type of sensor that helps you understand what's in the world and what's in front of or in a certain direction of your player. So I have our player right here, and I have three objects here, and I'm going to show you the power of raycast through a few different ways. So let's jump into the brain of our main player right here. Right now they have the default third-person adventure brain. What we're going to do is we're going to add a line right here on the wind side. We're going to go to sensors, and that's where you are going to see raycast hit. And uh, with a raycast, it's basically a line going out from a certain direction from uh, the object that you're putting the raycast in. So we first have to set a direction. Now you can do this either by setting a from point and a to point, or an actual directional point. Right now we're going to set a directional point, and we're going to say raycast hit in direction forward, and we're going to draw this, just so you kind of understand what this does. So let's jump into test and take a look at this. So you see a line in front of our main character right here. As they move around, this line continues to be in front of them. And what this is doing is this sensor is detecting once this line crosses the path of terrain or another object, then something can happen to that. So we're going to now make something happen by simply making it so that when this little line, this ray cast hit, actually hits one of these objects, it displays the name of the object above it. So let's jump back into the character brain. Now uh, I like to make child lines under here because when you're using ray casting, this line can get a bit long sometimes. Um, under the child line, on the do side, what we're going to do is we are going to say uh, display. I'm going to go to objects it. Then we're going to go over a page to appearance and say it name. So that's the name of the object that you are raycast hitting. Uh, that's what it stands for. It looks at wherever, uh, you, whatever object you are raycast hitting, that's the object. So display it name. Uh, then we're going to say above. We're going to copy it again. So let's jump back into test right now. So now you'll notice that when I raycast hit something, like this ancient pillar right here, then it displays a name on top of it. Same with this ancient dome, and same with this ancient corner trim, which is a bit small. Now this is only this is a child line under the raycast hit, so it's only appearing when I'm actually raycast hitting. When I'm not raycast hitting, it disappears. We can simply make it no longer a child line. and instead set an object variable right here. So let's say, uh, let's call this um, hit object equals it. And we're just going to replace the it right here with hit object. And now uh, there's nothing because I haven't raycast hit something. So as soon as I raycast hit something, now when I no longer raycast hitting, it still appears because it's no longer a child line. And as soon as I raycast hit something new, then the name appears above the new thing. So let's talk about a few other things you can do with raycast. So another great thing is you have an output of understanding the actual position that you hit with your raycast hit. And that can be really useful. And I'll show you how. So also as a child line under raycast hit direction forward, we're going to say, uh, we're going to create a vector variable. And uh, we're going to call it place of hit. And then we are going to make that equal to. Now when you do equal to, you're going to see this new outputs folder. And this outputs folder gives you a few different things from the actual raycast hit. Now the uh, easiest thing to understand is the hit position. Uh, you can also check the distance of where the hit's happening, but we're going to do the hit position, and that's the actual position in the world that the line is hitting the object on. So let's just delete this, and uh, now we can uh, do something at this actual position because I'm setting this vector variable to be equal to this position. So let's say on the win side, uh, when right trigger is pressed, then I am going to go ahead and create um, let's just say an alien asteroid pod at position place of hit. So let's jump back into test again. So now I'm hitting right trigger 
and nothing's being created at anywhere that I can see because no position has been set yet. So let's go ahead and actually uh, raycast hit this object right here. So that has now been raycast hit. And now uh, that appears right there. So I now raycast hit this column and it appears right there when I press right trigger. Now it appears there. And so just like that, you can uh, create this thing at the kind of last area that uh, you raycast hit. So really, really useful in having something happen at the place where you're hitting. Now you can obviously use this for a lot more interesting things than just creating an object there. You can actually store that position of that raycast hit and do some pretty complex stuff too. Last thing I want to show you is um, the kind of different constraints you can do with uh, raycast hit. So right now we're just doing direction forward. So you can also say uh, set a from position and, and a to position. So we're going to set a from position and we're going to set uh, the from position to be equal to this ancient dome. And then we're going to set a to position and we are going to make this just simply equal to the pillar right here. And we're going to we're going to draw that again. So let's just jump into test and so you can now see that this, uh, you can now see this raycast hit is right here. And if I were to cross in between there, then it's now raycast hitting me. And so you can use this for, for something like trip wires or cool little lasers passing between objects. Just like that, you know, you can use this to detect a, a bunch of different things. And the last few constraints just to talk, talk through is, so let's just go back to where I was before where we do a raycast hit. Um, in direction uh, forward from my character. And uh, you can also set a constraint of making it only look for terrain, making it look only for objects, and then you can also set a length of this thing. So maybe you want, you want your guy to kind of hover or you can detect things only within you know a, a few meters in front of them. So we're going to set a length here of uh, three. We're going to go back into test. And now you're going to see this much shorter line. Before the line kind of extended on forever, but now this shorter line, um, you know, I, I still have the code in where I'm creating an object, but I'm not close enough to any of these to actually have a raycast hit happen. So we're going to go up to this guy. Now raycast hit has happened, and uh, you see that it's now creating an object. So this is a great way to limit um, how far in front that you can do your raycast hit. So raycasting is a great tool. But a pro tip, just to let you know, is uh, this is what we term a uh, what can be sort of an quote unquote expensive usage of, uh, of memory in Project Spark. And what I mean by that is using a lot of ray casting that continues to happen, uh, this can, if a bunch of different objects are using it, this can start to slow down your game. So the more things that you're having looking for ray casting, uh, the more likely your game is to, to slow down, go a bit slower, and, uh, and you know, run at something like 15 frames per second, or you know, it depends on how many things you have ray casting. So uh, just a pro tip is if you want to use a lot of ray casting, try and limit it. So right now we have our ray cast always looking. So we can just simply do a limitation on it by saying a countdown timer of, let's say this guy only looks for, for you know, what's in front of them every half second. So we're going to do a countdown timer of 15 frames, and we're going to loop that. So now he's only looking for what's in front of him every 15 seconds. So it's using the, the very powerful raycast hit once every 15, or once, sorry, once every 15 frames, which is half a second. And just like that, you know, I'm still able to raycast. Now, it's not as perfect because it's only flashing every um, 15 frames, but it limits it and makes it so that, you know, I can really um, limit the amount of times that this taxing thing is happening. So that gives you a uh, rundown of kind of all the things you can do with Raycast to hit. Hopefully you find this useful and hopefully you find Raycast useful because Raycast is a really useful, great tool that you should use more often. Project Spark is where players create and creators play. What better way to be inspired than to see what's possible? This will surely spark your imagination. Now, how do we begin?